So we live together. Yep. We watch football together. Yep. We talk about football together. Yep. Why don't we just start a podcast? Sounds like a plan to me. Welcome back to another week of the eye test. It's myself, Lies, and my boy Culture Cams. And we're here today with another episode, man. Mm-hmm. What a weekend. We got the Champions League this week as well, too, which I'm actually pretty gutted. We're not recording kind of after, but no. you know, schedules go. I think you're going on holiday, so yeah. gotta get that out the way. Where are you going, by the way? Guy in Greece. Mm. Guy in Greece, guy in Greece. Little relaxation time. Do you know what I'm yeah, trying to yeah. say, man? Mid season been... holiday though. Nah, but it's quick. I'm going at the right time, though. I'm going at the right time. I'm not missing. I, I actually looked at the fixtures. Mm. I'm not missing big fixtures. Look, I'm here for Arsenal, Real Madrid. I mean, Arsenal, um, Bayern, Real yeah, Madrid, yeah. City. So I made sure I looked around and I think I'm going at just the right time. I'm coming back in perfect time as well. So, yeah, man, I think, mm. I think it's good timing. Load managing in April. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hold on, wait for the playoffs. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, bro, it's, exactly, bro. It's getting to crunch time now, bro. <laughs> And of course, you know it gets nonstop from yeah. now on, man. Of course, we were both uh, on television this week. Uh, yes. Saw you doing the Man United Liverpool game. Yeah. I obviously did it on, on a different platform myself. Mm-hmm. But bro, so close, man. Bro, so <laughs> close. Uh, something that we didn't expect as well. At all. But look, this is what Man United do. And this is why I keep saying Old Trafford mm. is this and Old Trafford might have a say in this title race. And Arsenal come to Old Trafford yeah. um, at some point this season. And I'm saying, like, I, I'm speaking to a lot of Arsenal fans and they think it's going to be easy. I'm just trying to tell people it will not be easy, bro. Like, no matter how bad United are, it's still United. You still walk into there with the mentality that you're playing United. Mm. Still, the fans are going to be up for it because they want to spoil parties. It's just the way football goes, you know what I'm trying to say? So... It's going to be interesting. We've already done our little first little stain on the mm, title yeah, race. Yeah, yeah. Especially when we got, we got this guy right here. huh? Mm. Big Kavi Mainu. Right, I was with Fu at the weekend. He was calling Kelleher. He was calling him Big K. I think this might have to be Big K. That's I can't lie. Big K. Big K, K that's what he was calling him. <laughs> Fu, I'd just be popping up with some random <laughs> that was stuff. That Fu. Fu is he? Oh, Fu is he? Oh, my God. <laughs> Even worse. But, yo, on the topic of Man United, I think Man United is like the perfect segue into what this week's going to be about because... In the space of an exact week, seven days, they played Brentford, they played Chelsea, and they played Liverpool. Mm. Now, all three of those games had late drama. In all three of those games, Man United took the lead. And in all three of those games, in the last 10 to 15 minutes, Mm. the other team came back. And in fact, against Chelsea and Brentford, 90 plus 10 minutes, Mm. the other team came in and did that. And that kind of built up a little question in my head, like, We've been seeing this quite a bit recently, Mm. and I want to give credit to The Athletic and give them their dues because they put out an article that I read this week kind of highlighting how insane this Premier League season has kind of been. Mm. I want to read you guys, uh, read you a few stats, and of course you guys as well to the audience about just how crazy this year has been. This season, we have seen the most goals per game with Mm. 3.3 in Premier League history. Wow. We've seen the most goals scored after 85 minutes with 146 in Premier League history. We've seen the joint most games finishing in a 4-3 scoreline in Premier League history with six. It's tied with the 94-95 season, which actually had 22 Mm. teams, and the 2001-02 season. So the joint most in Premier League history. We've had more comeback points per game than ever before. We've had the least 0-0 draws with 10 than in Premier League history than ever mm. before. Nearly half of Luton's games this season have been decided by goals after the 80 minutes. Brighton have not registered back-to-back Premier League wins since September and yet have never been in the bottom half of the season. Mm. And Fulham defeated Man United, Brighton, and Tottenham by a combined score of 8-1 over four games. Yet, they conceded six goals in matches against Sheffield United and Nottingham Forest, who are two of the bottom wow. four in the Premier League. All of that being said, we have a crazy bottom, uh, relegation race. Four teams are contesting it. Mm. And we have one of, if not the most insane title race that we've seen in Premier League history, where three of maybe the best teams in the world are mm. going at it week in, week out. And with seven games left in the season, no one knows who's going to win. Mm. Which all leads me to the question of this video. And my question for you, Kim: Is this the greatest Premier League season we have seen? The greatest Premier League season. I mean, those stats, those stats are insane. You know, bro. those stats are crazy. And in, you actually can feel those things as well, especially because I think the one that really points out to me is that the, obviously there's the goals one, but I think it's the one after 85 minutes. 
And the reason why I think that's so massive is because that, you know, sometimes in some sports, there's a rule change and you start to see the effect of a rule change. Mm. Or you see someone uh, change a sport through the way they play or whatever. I think this is a perfect example of how rules have changed and have affected football. Because you're talking about it's the most goals scored after 85th minute in Premier League history. Mm -hmm. I would love to see how many of those are after 92 minutes, after 91 minutes. Because this new added on time where referees are stopping the clock, no matter the break, whether it's celebrations, whether it's injuries, you're getting that longer period because the game, you know, they've done their research and realized that the game is not being played enough. Too many times people mm. are wasting time and you only have the ball in play for 40 minutes. So now ex is there's an extension on added on time. So we're always, every single time I watch a match, I'm expecting seven minutes added on, yeah. eight minutes added on. Chelsea, I, we had 10, I think. 10 yeah, minutes yeah. added on. I remember back in the day, like it was rare you go past 94, 95. Mm. And now you're getting 99, sometimes 100. And for that to happen, that is a direct effect of it. Because I think, one, teams are not switched off anymore. You used to get to 90 and be like, or 80, 89 and okay, everyone's seeing it out and the game's going. Now you're thinking to yourself, 85th minute, I still got potentially 15 minutes to go. Your mentality changes it's as true. players, as coaches, mm. they'll be making later changes. And I think you're just seeing a massive effect of that in today's it's game. True. You it know used I mean? to be like you get four or five minutes on the board and you're like, okay, we can push for this. And and in, and then remember, four or five minutes to be on the board, a Jose Mourinho will be like, uh, Jeremy. Yeah, Mikel. Yeah, Thiago. Come on, the pitch. Manish. <laughs> yeah, somebody yeah. just come on. Yeah. Four or five Waste more yeah, time. Yeah. Now, now the, man, the, the, the referees, you want to do that sub? All right. All right. We'll go into the but it, I, I'm thinking it even the opposite. That's like, okay, a coach is trying to hold on to it. Yeah. I'm thinking as a United fan with Sir Alex in the past. Yes. We see four or five minutes. I'd say, like, all right, we got it. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> we got a little sun in the tank. Now, if yeah. we see five minutes, it's like, Damn, there wasn't yeah. an injury. There wasn't like a VAR decision. Yeah. We want 99. We want yeah. 100. So 100%, I definitely agree with you. And I think another thing that kind of stems from this new rule change in terms of how much at a time we're getting on, and you might disagree with me because it might be a marginal thing in your head, but I want you to think of when you see it as often as you do, do you think the additional five to six to seven minutes that players are playing mm. every single game stretched across a pitch mm. is also maybe starting mental fatigue, which means that in those final minutes, you're saying teams are locking in, but maybe fatigue is also building up oh, too. And God. mental fatigue is starting to kind of, okay, you have a late collapse in the, in the mm -hmm. like you saw with United three times basically this season. Mm -hmm. A hundred percent, because going back to the example, right? When we were at the Brentford game. So I remember at the Brentford game, because usually, I don't know about how many stadiums, but a lot of stadiums, once it hits 90, it just says 90. Mm. That's all it says. It yeah. doesn't say 91, United, 92. for example, it's like that. Yeah, 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 it just says 90. And you don't know what's going on. Yeah. So I'm just thinking as a player, I, let's say I do a clearance. I head the ball out, whatever. And I feel like it's been three minutes, four minutes. And I look, look, look at the clock and it's still saying 90. And I'm like, hold on. The referee point. said there's eight minutes added on. I'm thinking, yo, I've been playing for ages still. And then you're thinking, you're still looking at the clock. You're still looking at the clock. It's mental fatigue. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. And it, it, like when you can't see, obviously now, if you can see the clock ticking down 91, 92, 93, then maybe you start to condition yourself. But I've been to two, three stadiums where I've actually paid attention to that. It just stops at 90. Mm. So you don't know where you don't know where you are That's in the true. game, bro. That's Honestly, true. you don't know where you are. So yeah. I think that does play a, a play a massive part in it, bro. A hundred percent. I mean, let's look at a few of these other stats and then kind of get our opinions on that too. So most goals per game, I think just in general, right? That stat in particular, I wouldn't be surprised if I were to like really look deep into it if, let's say, the top five seasons in Premier League history all came within the last decade. Because mm. I do feel like the tactical switch in terms of how teams approach games, like teams are now, like everyone now has a, a, an elite level coach in terms of like tactically their mm -hmm. setup, their system is, is so like... The average Premier League manager for me is at a higher level than it was 15 mm -hmm. years ago. But... I would also say with the introduction now of teams playing higher lines, whether it's yep. <laughs> Luton or, or Arsenal, yep. um, that is now also though kind of like, it's like a catch-22 because yeah. you are playing more offensive because you are building up from the back. You are also more suspect to leaking goals. You mm -hmm. are also more suspect to being hit with a ball over the top that basically takes out your entire defense. Yeah. And I do think that while it is a pleasure to see now teams, they don't go to Old Trafford anymore for the most part. Well, that's also because United aren't that great mm. anymore. But in terms of, they don't go to the top teams anymore and just park the bus mm. and hope for a Benjani late winner or yeah, Yakubu yeah, yeah. late winner. Like they are trying to play their own style mm -hmm. no matter the the, the the game or the magnitude mm -hmm. of the game. So from an entertainment point of view, 
that's that's good for a neutral. But it also is meaning, yeah. Hey, bro, one ball over the top, your your yeah. defense might be cooked. Uh, I I feel like it goes. That one is 50-50 for me in terms of how much I enjoy it. Like, listen, I love goal games that have a lot of goals, but I like when games that have a lot of goals feels rare. Now, not when I say rare, I don't mean like once in a blue moon, but I do like to think like, whoa, what is going on in this yeah. game? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Instead of, oh, I'm expecting this every but single to week. But to that point though, mm. right? That brings up this narrative that I saw on Twitter the other day. Mm. So like, obviously we had the Arsenal City game that ended in a nil-nil draw. Mm. And like the common consensus of that was that it was a boring, boring mm. game. But there were also, there's a, a small section of people kind of saying, well, it was like a tactical chess match. And for mm. me, it was very enjoyable to see two teams of such high level with such mm. great players and such elite managers kind of trying to figure themselves mm. out. Like they enjoyed that. And then the Chelsea United game happened a week later, which yeah. is the antithesis of that. It's yeah. just like no defending, basically. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. basketball game where every, uh, there's like a chance a minute, a chance an attack, uh, obviously late drama, comical defending at the end. Mm -hmm. And there were some people who were saying, wow, that was a brilliant watch as a neutral. Yeah. But then there was also, again, that small section of people saying, well, for you, that might be entertaining. But for mm. me, seeing like how basically useless these two teams yeah. are at defending doesn't really sit right with me. It depends how you see the game, bro. It depends yeah. how you see the game. Some people watch football to be analytical. Some people watch it for pure analysis. Some people watch it for But also, I think some people watch it to see the elite of the elite. Yeah. And in a Chelsea versus United game, that That's wasn't really the elite of the elite. No, absolutely. Listen, when you're watching relegation teams going at it you're, you're entertained yeah. or you're not going to sit here and say you know what? this is the greatest match i've ever seen because that naturally usually comes with the higher quality yeah. you know what i mean with the higher quality if they were doing it in a high if arsenal and city went out there and did a 4-3 we'll be calling it the greatest of course game because of course. You're, there's quality on yeah, the pitch yeah. as well so i get it from that standpoint but the, the chelsea man united match was like a basketball game as you're saying that's as a neutral, that might be fun because you're just like, oh, whatever, two silly teams doing whatever. As a fan, you're mm. stressed out. You're saying this ain't good. You know what I mean? Naturally, I'm saying this ain't good. This is a disaster, blah, blah, blah. But I think there's manners. Every game is different and you've got to take it in a different way. As I said, some people watch it on an analytical side of things, simply analytically when they're watching football. They want to analyze the game. They want to be able to tell why this happened, this happened, this happened. But you got to also remember, imagine you were in a pub Mm. imagine you uh, went with your boys and you watched that Chelsea Liverpool game yeah. imagine you went for a, some shisha and some drinks and you're watching that unbelievable mm. you'll be like this is amazing yeah. so it really depends if I'm sitting on my couch with my notebook out wanting to see then okay Chelsea uh, City I mean Chelsea Man United I'm not learning nothing maybe you'll learn more of Arsenal and City mm. but for the entertainment value I do think listen as I said goals are really good but I do think there's certain times where yeah, you do want to see a KG nil, no, no, not nil, nil. I don't yeah, like yeah. nil nils, but you might might want to see a, a late one nil or mm. two. But there's manners of it. There's manners yeah, to do yeah. it. We always talk about Chelsea v Liverpool nil nils in them cup finals. They were absolute bangers games. They weren't poor games. Yeah. The reason why people called Arsenal Ch City boring is because there was barely there chances, no chances being registered. Yeah, yeah. That was a boring game. Yeah. Whereas Chelsea Liverpool in the finals when they were nil-nils, they were entertaining. Mount missed the two sitters. Conor Gallagher did this, mm. did it. And obviously different seasons, yeah, but yeah. you know what I'm trying to say. So I just think, yeah, when it comes to it, I think the reason why there is more goals being scored, and listen, we're speaking, we haven't got Opta behind us. We haven't yeah. got Squaqua behind us, nothing. But when I look at it, the game's faster. True. Yeah, the game is True. faster. And you look at any sport, basketball, the game is faster. The athletes are more are more um, prime. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So naturally, the game moves faster. There's going to be more opportunity for you to break lines. There's going to be more opportunities for getting behind. Mm. There's going to be more natural opportunities in the space of 90 minutes to try and score goals. We love the, the old days because, yeah, it was a little bit slower, but I felt like it gave the elite players more time to yeah, it gave to them show an advantage, their, 100%. their, their elite. And I, I think it goes back era, to what I was saying different. as well too, with the, how systematic as well the game is mm. back in the day, there weren't systems basically like you can shut down one player on yeah. its own because of how good the system. But I also think how system oriented as well it is has kind of led to now the fact that there are no, no nil, nil games to be honest. Yeah, with but, you. but it's not only that as well, right? It's um, like teams are designed to break other teams down. Like yeah. it, they're, Back in the day, I, I felt like if you could shut down the team's best player, mm -hmm. you could shut down their attack. Yeah. Now, you can shut down Mo Salah and mm. Liverpool can still create five chances. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was never happening before. Yeah, so what it is as well, though, as well, like I think when we're talking about the defending aspect, so that's me talking about it offensively. Offensively, the game is faster. 
naturally in the 90 minutes, you're going to have more opportunity to do certain things. Even bro, the game is fine margins. Like mm-hmm. doing something in two seconds faster than doing it's it. It's true. hundred percent. It's a yeah, yeah, yeah. massive, yeah, yeah. what they say with it, marginal gain, yeah. right? Defensively though, as well, defender's job now isn't just to defend. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? A defender's job now is to attack. So now you've got fullbacks higher. You've got fullbacks inverted. You've got defenders that they walk on the pitch. And I remember I listened to Rio Ferdinand speaking about how he was at West Ham. He'll concede a goal, but he's happy that he dribbled past three men, drove into the midfield, yeah. passed it into the midfield. That's standard now, now, I'm not now saying that's what players are doing, but it's hard for you to cut through now if you can't play on the ball. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, the defender's job isn't nothing down outside, shut this game off. It's... Nothing down outside, but also, yeah, make sure when I get the ball, you move into the angle. You're, they're thinking differently. Yeah, that's they're true. thinking differently about the game. So I think defensively as well, they're just not as resolute. That's how I see it. They're not as resolute as they used to be, not as resilient as they used to be. So on one side, the attacking is faster. And then defensively, they have other things to do now. So now you put that marriage together, you're going to get more goals. Yeah. Yeah, you know I'm trying to say and in Listen, what, what Kelleher did, um, well, what Kwanzaa passed it to Bruno. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a not, freak that's, accident. That's yeah, yeah. not common. But keepers yeah. are now coming out thinking yeah, about yeah. playing as Bro, well. Bro, I, I swear, the United game was a perfect example. Well, the ball comes all the way back yeah. from our corner. Mm-hmm. It falls to Dallo's feet. He's our last man. Mm. And out of shot, I see him pass it to the right. And I'm thinking, there's no one at right back. Like, you're the right back. Our whole team's in the box. Yeah. And I see Onana <laughs> <laughs> playing right back. That's the game these days, bro. Yeah. Now, don't get it twisted. We're not saying now because keepers are ball playing, we're going to get halfway yeah. line goals all the time. That's <laughs> well, not Onana, you can see it on preseason, yeah. <laughs> bro. <laughs> That's not what happens. The average of that is probably 0.0 yeah, no, I agree, per I agree, game, I right? But again, keepers are also have different mentalities yeah. too. You know what I mean? Keepers, and I'm talking about in the makeup of a keeper. The makeup of a keeper now is to be a good ball player. 100%. Is to be so. Whereas back in the day, you have Anton and Niemi and all these guys who we talk about who were just shot stoppers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris Kirkland. That, that, yeah. that aspect is yeah, bro. Now keepers. Now again, I'm just going through the eye test. There is a lot of chances nowadays that I see go in, and I'm like. I feel yeah. like you could have saved that, but actually, 100%. you're a good ball playing. Uh, Onana is the biggest example so, of that. I mean, on, so Onana, we have effectively looked at him and said, the saves that we used to expect David De Gea to make, like he will stop the unstoppable sometimes. Yeah. Like, we're not expecting that from you. Mm-hmm. Like, just be a, a base good level, mm-hmm. but the value that you bring on yeah. the ball will kind of out uh, like overset or basically like it'll make up for the fact that you are in this elite level mm-hmm. shot stopper for example like the value of being able to play from the back and start from the back mm. is just as important that, well obviously i wouldn't say it's just as important because mm-hmm. keeping the ball out of the net is, is still no matter what the primary job of a goalkeeper yeah but if you can't play with the ball at your feet you can't exist in today's game yeah i think it's just funny because so obviously we're talking about the the greatest season is it the greatest season i think there's aspects of it that i don't like whereas like Sheffield, Burnley, how bad they've they wasted are, our you know? they've wasted our time those two. Yeah, right? I mean, like I, yeah. I I was even saying it on 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 a different show. I was saying <laughs> there should be a thing of like if you drop points to Burnley or, or Sheffield, you should be deducted points, bro. I bro, can't lie. Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea did. did it two out of three weeks. Yeah, yeah like, you should yeah. be deducted points, bro. These guys are Sheffield in particular. Mm. Burnley, they, they've actually like the, the second half of the season. To be fair, they picked up a few points where I didn't mm. think they were going to. But Sheffield United have wasted everyone's yeah. point in, in, in the season and like. Looking down there, though, right? Bar those two teams. But do you think that like, even when I look at an Everton, when I look at an Everton, I look at a Nottingham Forest. Well, that's what I was going to say. There is yeah, yeah. players in that team, in them teams, where you think, oh, yeah, they're good players. But at the same time, I feel like they've all been at a really low level too. Everton, not so much because Everton got the deduction and they got another yeah, deduction. Yeah, and Everton, to be kinda, fair, if you look at them, their, they have, underly- their underlying yeah. stats are all really good. But like, but I, they again, had, they were unbeaten. They, they, did you hear that stat about Everton hadn't won a game in, in 13. 13. Well, in, that's what I want to say. Yeah. Everton have basically, before this weekend where they beat Burnley, that was their first win in 13 games. Mm. Like I've said, they've had two points deductions now and they're still not in the bottom yeah, three. Yeah. They've kept away from that. That's insane. That's insane. You look at some other stat, like the one I told you about Luton. Basically, Luton are saving games this year at the death more mm. than anyone. Like nearly half of Luton's games this season have been decided by goals after 80 minutes. Mm. Forest are down there. Brentford have been missing their best player all or half the season. Even since he's come back, haven't been that great. Mm. Again, I don't think they've been in the bottom three mm. all year. Like that kind of just point Forest, another one. They've had no, at, multiple you, point deductions. You look at how bad a Chelsea have been. You look at how bad a Manchester United have been. 
Man United are sitting in Europa League spot. With negative I, goal difference. I don't think there's been a team, I might be wrong, that I've been that this bad Bro, and, and, yeah. made, and made and made made Europe. 100%. It's Europa League. 100%. I'm not talking about conference. I'm and I, don't, I even Europa look at League. United this year. It's not West even... Ham were better than us two seasons ago when West Ham dropped into, I think it might have been Europa or even Conference League. They were better than my United this season. Definitely. But I, I even look at like United this year. Like They don't even have like that Bruno putting up crazy numbers. No. Right? Their top scorer is on seven goals. Literally. Our defense stinks. And like, that was a... That was, you can even there, say it might be a purple there's, patch. There's nothing you can even look at in terms of like, oh, they've just had a guy bailing the... Like, yeah. I don't know. How, I couldn't explain to you no. how you had her six. Brighton, I gave you the stat, haven't won back to... They haven't put one win and another one together mm. since September and yet have consistently stayed above the top half. And you look at Chelsea. I mean, if Chelsea had beat Sheffield United... And Burnley. They were within, they were within Europa League spots. They would have been one and point behind us, I think, if they beat Burnley and Sheffield. There we go. So, and we look about how bad they are. But then we sit there and say stuff like Brighton are doing well and West Ham are doing well. But then you think about how, obviously, it's this nature of the size of the club. But you sit there and you think about how bad Chelsea are. And Chelsea still, look, there's still eight games to go. They can still do it. Mm. They can still get Europe. Man United, they, they, they could still get Europa League or whatever. And there was a little chance. There was an outside opportunity of top four at one point. Yeah, nuts. And you think about how bad Man United sitting there with minus one goal difference in that position. So I think it's 50-50. I think when you look at the top end, you've got an absolutely exciting title race. You've no, got 100%. Arsenal, you've got City, you've got um, Liverpool, which is, is one point between three with eight games to go. I don't know if we've seen anything like that in terms of how close that is and uh, yeah. in terms of the margin for error is so little. And we always praise Liverpool and Man City, the City pool. We praise about how one mistake could have cost them a title. Yeah. But that is the exact same case now. One mistake from anybody can cost them a title. And it's, it's the jeopardy at stake is huge. And I don't think we've seen jeopardy at that level. Uh, at no, this yeah, level. not at the stature. We had in the in the late 2000s, I can remember a few mm -hmm. times where like Arsenal, Chelsea, United were all going at it and like mm -hmm. Arsenal dropped out at the end of Eduardo, but that Arsenal team was nowhere near as like, like we're looking at Arsenal, Liverpool and City right now and you could make the argument that of the top five teams in the world, three of them are those teams. Mm. You could even say top four teams in the world. It's Liverpool, City, uh, what is it? I'll uh, respect the teams in the Champions Bar, League. Bar Real Liverpool Madrid, who are you adding there. there? Bar Real Madrid, who are you adding there over Liverpool? I mean, Liverpool... I'm telling you, so you let's say you add Real Madrid because we have to respect it, and mm. they've had a great season too. City, Liverpool, Arsenal, Real Madrid, no order. Mm. Is there another team that would break into I that? I wouldn't say there's someone that's absolutely outstanding candidate, but... I do think we still got to respect to PSGs and. Do you think PSG like would beat this Liverpool team? They probably could. I don't. Well, they. Yeah, of course, yeah, anyone could, could on any honest. given day. But I, I, I wouldn't put PSG on this mm. on this level. To be honest with you, I think these three teams and then Real Madrid, of course, too, are are in my opinion mm. the, the top three dogs and uh, what's it called the big three. That's mm. what we're calling them, bro. Yeah, they better win the damn Europa League with that with, with claims like that. You yeah, know? yeah. I mean, there's they another super go, team down there yeah, too. Yeah, no, they better. <laughs> we're talking about Champions League teams. Leverkusen yeah, might be it might be in the top saying, five like, this uh, year. And that's the thing, like that's yeah. what I mean. Like, maybe after respect them type of teams obviously there's some that are still in but i'm just making that point stuff, in terms yeah. of like when you looked at those teams in the late 2000s like okay arsenal were challenging for the league but i mm. wouldn't have said arsenal are top three top four mm. team in the world at that point you still had the real well, real those days you still had barca you still had mm. milan you still had you you still had some top teams mm. Bayern, of course uh in, in world football i look at th these three right now they are hitting a, a point in their season where Again, like the, the fact that you cannot predict mm. every week, bro. I, I told you the other day, yeah, Liverpool got it. And then one yeah. day I, just, I was like, no, but I don't think so. I think Arsenal yeah, are the best yeah. team in the world. But then you look at City on the TV and it's like, mm. damn, bro. Like they, yeah. they still might do it. Even those when City and Liverpool used to be going back and forth for the league. Yeah. If you remember, it was still City and Liverpool were chasing them. Yeah. This week, it's like every week there's a there's it's a different a change. change in the table, bro. Yeah, and that's that. It's gonna be interesting because at the end of the season they'll probably show a stat like that where it's like how many times it's, it's interchange yeah, yeah. and how many times so they're gonna do in them graphics, them pages that do them graphics. Like yeah, yeah. So even like 13, 14 is like competition in terms of like how many different teams are talking yeah. the league. But I think even that year, City won the league probably with the least amount of time spent in, in, at, yeah. at first compared to Arsenal. Yeah. Compared C to Arsenal, C yeah. City for, at one stage had three games in hand. Yeah, yeah. At yeah. one stage in that season, so they were always kind of looking at like they're not in it, yeah, but they yeah. were in it. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. at that point together, remember in United in twenty twenty, yeah, twenty one. We City were like ninth United. or whatever in December. They had like four games yeah, in yeah, hand, yeah. bro. We were, ga <laughs> we were gassed up like crazy, and we're like, well, to be fair, they do have four. Yeah, bro. Yeah, that's the thing with City, right? Every year we're like. 
they don't look the same, bro. Like yeah, something's yeah, wrong yeah. with them. And then you look at their fixture list, you look at them just dispatch these small teams yeah. with ease, and it's like, okay, if they end the season with 91 points, which yeah. is what they're gonna get if they win every game of the season, that's a great season, mm-hmm. and none of us have basically respected them all and year. And they're still in the in the in the, in the trouble champions. hunt as yeah, well. Yeah. I think as you're saying, like at, at that level, I like the quality that's being shown or whatever the, at the at the top end level. I think there has been moments where once you go back, like the old top four, yes, Liverpool might end the season on 68 points in fourth or something. But I look at the quality that they had in 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 those Liverpool teams sometimes, and then you got the Arsenal, you got the Chelsea, you got United. I mean, the quality across them four were amazing. I know Aston Villa are there and Tottenham. I wouldn't have them on that kind of level, but I like how close it is with top three. But I think when it comes to the uh, question, can I, can I add something yeah. before you say that? To be fair, though, again, I look at I'm going to compare it to those 18, 19, 20, 21 seasons where City and Liverpool are so much better. They were also so much better in individual games against the rest of the big six, mm. if you want to call it. This year, though, mm. if you look at the results between the big six teams, City, I think, have only beat United. Yeah. They failed to beat anyone else. Mm-hmm. Even Liverpool in big six games haven't been that great. They, they failed beat to beat anyone. United. They failed to beat City. They failed to beat Arsenal. They drew to Chelsea and beat them mm-hmm. once. They failed to beat Spurs. And Arsenal, to be fair to them, they but even them, they drew to Spurs. Mm-hmm. They drew to Chelsea. They still have to go to, to, mm-hmm. Ar- to United away. They they drew to like they're good results. It's good yeah. games between the big six this year. Yeah, yeah, it's it's close. Yeah, the margin for error, as you as I'm talking about, is 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 minimal. But the thing is, right, when we talk about great seasons, as much as when you live through it, honestly, you I've lived through some seasons. I can't remember every single aspect of the season. I go back and I'm like, oh, I remember that or whatever. But what captivates you, what brings you to seasons, is how it ends. The it's ending is true. always what you it's remember, true. bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember Kieran Richardson keeping them up, um, West Brom up. I remember Defoe keeping Sunderland up. I remember, I remember these Hardy mo- against West Brom keeping West Brom, Leicester You up. remember yeah, yeah. Tevez keeping yeah, up West Ham. Yeah. You So that's the relegation side. Yeah, yeah. The top end of Aguero, the side, you of remember course. Aguero. You remember Eduardo's injury, which yeah, led yeah, to yeah. whatever. You remember these little moments. You remember yeah. the Drogba winner at Old Trafford. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. moments Liverpool of the season. Exactly. The Sane versus Liverpool. Those are the moments you remember. So that's why I like the 13-14 season. Because of how it ended. Because of how it was going. Because of the little horse in Chelsea and how they stained Liverpool. The Gerrard slip. Iconic moment forever. Because of the certain aspects of it that I just love. You see this season. We're like, "Mm, who's going to be the player of the year? Rodri maybe. Uh, Foden's doing well. But is he really player of the year? Maybe. Mm. We don't know. Saka's doing okay. He's doing okay, yeah. And you, Declan Rice. But when I look at the 13 14 season, Louis Dam Suarez was amazing. I look at Yaya Torre was amazing. You, I look at uh, that was play, Hazard, devil's advocate, player. though. Do you, yeah. do, you, do, do you think, though, I'm not saying I agree or disagree with you, but someone would bring up the argument, especially on Twitter, to say that's nostalgia talking. And like, I don't oh, think so. You don't I think, think these so. are some of the. You ask anybody, what's the best midfield season, arguably, in but no, but history? But modern day fans will say this Rodri season is entering that stratosphere. Nah, get out of here, they'll man. say that Foden season could be like Hazard's first season where he kind of emerged. Yeah, so they'll, they'll, they'll make those, those same kinds of arguments. That, that's, a, that's a good one. I don't mind with, with the Foden-Hazard thing. Obviously, Hazard, for me, is a superior player. So that's a, that's a different aspect to but it. Bro, but, in, not in a few, no, but you, I'm not comparing Piaia. You can't compare Piaia and Rodri. No, not I didn't, as no, players, but my point is... But their season is impossible. In a few, let's say in five impossible. years, bro, if City win the league, people will be saying, do you remember the season where Rodri went a whole year mm. undefeated yeah. and he was putting up these numbers and he was the core of this team yeah, I, and he yeah. almost won the Ballon d'Or. People will be... I'm telling I you, hear what you're saying, people but with the benefit of hindsight will yeah, be looking at it that way. Just the same way now people are looking at Yaya Toure's season and saying, look how many were open... I'm telling you, this is how football fans work. So to kind of again i don't i'm not saying i agree mm. with them or i agree with you but to play devil's advocate this whole thing about how storylines and narratives also mm-hmm. shape it up i can easily see how people will look at this season mm-hmm. in particular and also stir up van dyke he finally came back yeah. to his best and, and liverpool's look, and club's final season yeah, liverpool I mean, did you it you can do that in 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 so many seasons we yeah. could go to 12 i could be biased and say in 12 13 we were down and out yeah. we signed van Persie. it was fine nah, you know you know you, you yeah, can guess it yeah. up but i don't really care about that you know what i mean and, I, and the reason why i like 13 14 as well yeah right i always say i think the league was started getting a bit dry towards 12 13 when we won it i don't we won it but i don't really that season was meaty right 13 14 i like how there was like the emergence of liverpool for example after such a long time i i personally liked yeah, that yeah. The i liked of how Chelsea. yeah i liked how um first season exactly jose Mourinho returned i liked how 
the 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 city team were playing with Yaya Torre, as we're mentioning. I like how not even what Liverpool obviously they had the Luis Suarez thing, but it's the way Liverpool played. I felt like it was so refreshing to the league at that point because I feel the league was getting a little bit stale. That was the return was of the Ozil. Manchi- that was the the Ozil came. Ozil from the Premier came league. with that moment. I feel like it was the Premier League towards twelve thirteen. It's against the it old Ferguson team. It was Meady, Chelsea City were under washed, Mancini. Yeah, yeah. Chelsea were washed. It, it was like, okay, cool. But then Pellegrini's team came. and did, So I think there was, that's what I like. Uh, so that's what I like because I'm talking about how seasons climax. This season now, as much as it's good right now, or we're like, this is a good season. Imagine if, just say, for example, City lose their next two, Liverpool lose their next two, Arsenal win their next two. Now Arsenal seven points clear, as let's just say, for example, and they just stroll to the title. We're not going to look back at We're going to be like, yo, that was nice. Yeah. But so we have to it's see how, how it ends. Yeah, yeah for yeah. me, it's how it ends. Like, bro, you will ever, forever remember that slip from Gerard. Then they try and go against Crystal Palace and they collapse. That was crazy. Nah, that was a crazy season. Like, and then Yaya running through Aston Villa, running through Palace. Like, maybe again, it's, you could say it's nostalgia or whatever. But I just feel like when it's moments, I need them moments to hit. Because that 11 12, as we're talking about Aguero, you look at that season, those goals, I remember there was a different United team kind of started taking shape and the Aguero moment. You remember those moments. And I think this season needs to provide us with that. For example, look at the way it ended with Gundogan and the Man City thing. Yeah, great the, ending, yeah. That's incredible, bro. Yes, okay, it's only two teams and this time it's three teams, but what an ending, yeah. bro. I was sitting there when Liverpool, were, because Liverpool were going to win the quadruple. I was sitting there almost vomiting when Gun- when Villa went 2 0 up, the Coutinho with Steven Gerrard. These are stories. Yeah, These yeah. are the moments that you're going to remember I, forever. I, 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 do th- I need that I, this I do, season. I do think, I though, that. no matter what way the Premier League season goes, this year there will be a storyline because Arsenal's storyline will be that in December, everyone, including you, yeah. had completely written them off. Mm. They, If Arsenal are to win the league, they'll probably have to go do it going almost 20 games unbeaten. Mm. Like they'll have to go perfect the rest of the season. And that'll be a storyline. Arteta's first. Mm. This young Arsenal team. The best defense we've seen since probably the 15-goal mm. Chelsea team. If Liverpool win it, the storyline writes itself. Mm. With Jurgen Klopp, his last season. Maybe Salah's last season. Mm. The way they did it. City, it's going to be four in a okay. row. City will be the first team to win yeah. four in a row. And they might win it by doing the damn triple. Yeah. So I do agree with you in terms of like how it ends is massively important, yeah. bro. A story could be amazing throughout it. But if it's got some shit ending or like a yeah. movie has a shit ending, you're like, damn, bro. Yeah. Like, it was so good until the end. Like, what, what were people saying at WrestleMania this week? Like, oh, I think, I mean, to be fair, it was Faisal who was saying mm. it because he's a, a Roman Reigns fan. Mm. But he was saying, oh, it was a perfect night until Roman Reigns yeah, lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, I do, honestly, yeah. endings, man. When you read a, as you're talking about, when you read a book, bro, or you go to a film, you go to the cinema and it ends bad. Yeah, there was, a, there was 10 murders in that mm. film, five explosions, two jumping off cliffs. But if it ends on, on, a, on, a, on a downer, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. To be fair yeah. though, That's they do, thing. They do say on. the journey is just as important. Enjoy as the, the journey, yeah. yeah Enjoy yeah. the they journey. They do say the journey is the, the film, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the destination matters too. Hundred you know percent. The destination matters too. And it, oh, what I would say though is like, yeah, I like how these guys have like kind of separated themselves this season. Kind of everyone talks about big six. Yeah, it's not really a big yeah, six. Yeah, we the big three. Yeah, we the big three. Like we yeah. started the league. Ho- hopefully nobody apologizes though. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Who would apologize after those three? Mm, Arteta it is Arteta it. Arteta will probably, uh, probably uh, apologise to Pep, Pep yeah, yeah, yeah. Club I mean. apologising but no nah, honestly um, amongst all of them three it is, it is good how they've separated themselves and stuff but yeah I mean I, I, think, I, it, I think it hard, does yeah. I think it does come down to it because look the reason why I say this as well is because I just mentioned all them moments that you remember right all them how it made you feel and stuff and I'm always all about feelings you know mm. what I mean everybody knows that but you won't be able to tell me these stats that you're reading off now. You're not going to remember them in three years, bro. No, we won't. You're yeah, not yeah. going to remember. Oh, yo, by the way, do you guys remember in the thingy? That was the most goal scored all season. And then after 85th minute and then Fulham did it. You're not going to remember this stuff. What you're going to remember is the moment is how it happened. How that relegation happened. How that top four battle mm. ended. How that, bro, we still talk about 05, 06. Um, Pete's, um, not Pizzagate, sorry. Um, when Spurs got ill. 
Oh, the, the the lasagna, the lasagna, lasagna gate. gate. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, yeah. we still talk about them things. Yossi yeah. Ben Ayun, Downing Spurs. I hear it. It's the moment for me that captivates and brings you together. I, I, as I said, them stats that you read, amazing. And in the moment, we're like, nice. But when I look at it, I don't know if I'm going to go back and be like, this was the greatest season. I have to see how the season ends, bro. Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, when I look at greatest... And maybe it's a little biased. No, I wouldn't even say it's biased because, like, the whole league was crazy. I think it's 11-12, bro. Mm. I know the title race and how it ended also massively swings that. Mm. Like, the fact that... We collapsed and stuff. No, but, like, even... Like, okay, the Aguero moment moment is untouchable. Like, that's the crowning point of it. Like, you talk about an ending. Yeah. That's literally the final kick of a ball Mm -hmm. deciding the league. Like, that's... For me, I don't think... Martin Tyler said we'll never see anything like it again. I actually... I don't think we'll... Mm. In my lifetime, I'll be shocked if I see a league and the way it did. But also, hey, Gundogan basically did it. Nah, but no, 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 no. But like, yeah. even that, even that was like, it wasn't in the final kick. Yeah, the yeah, league yeah. literally shifted. Yeah, first to second was decided yeah. with the final kick of yeah, a ball. Yeah. That's Mind unfathomable. Blood. And like, yeah. also when you think it's two city rivals, Liverpool, yeah. and a City and United, City to get their first. Even yeah. in that subplot, QPR fighting to stay in the league mm. against Bolton that 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 same season. United having the advantage that they did mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in terms of like what f- f- I think it's the biggest collapse in Premier League uh, history in terms of eight, where they I were. Think it was eight points. Yeah. Yeah. They, they drawing to Everton in the last minute, losing to, to Wigan for the first time and Lost only time City. ever in Sir Alex. You even look throughout that season, the big score lines that you had. Ars- United beating Arsenal 8 yeah. 2, and a few weeks later, getting beat 6 1 yeah, by City. Yeah, yeah. The City meltdown. Tevez being sent home and then being brought back. Mm. Balotelli, why always me? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just so oh, much. Van Persie having that ridiculous yeah. season. It's and I think even Chelsea obviously Champions going to League, win the Champions yeah. League that season for me, again maybe the ending because it's so high is what yeah. trumps everything for me. But I think that's I, I don't see a league I don't I don't know how you can get better than that. Mm. Yeah, I mean it's hard it's hard to yeah it, it's genuinely hard maybe to, old I heads think, will tell us eighty nine ninety or whatever yeah, when yeah, yeah, uh, I mean, Arsenal 89, beat, yeah, yeah. 80, 89. that was that was if you read about that that was crazy that season was fake but again look it does come down to. Like even when we won it, it and when we won our first one, it, it went down to the wire. Mm-hmm. When, when, when we went, when Steve Bruce scored and stuff, it went down to the wire. Yeah, and of stuff. course. You know, I'm just saying titles go down to the wire a lot, and that's what we want, and that's why this season is set up to be beautiful. It's good. To, to kind of finish it off, let's look towards the bottom of the league as well, too, because mm-hmm. like when we talk about is this the greatest season, or like even like if I was to rechange the question, like is this the best advert for the Premier League? Because the way the Premier League promotes itself mm. is oh, we're the most entertaining league in the world because anybody can be anybody on their day. And to be fair, this season, it's tough to really say whether that's the case because when I read you those stats about Everton having one in 13, Brentford, I, like they have like one win in their last like 10 or something mm-hmm. like that. Like they haven't been in good form. Burnley and Sheffield speaks for itself. I think those level, I, that's what I'm trying to say to you. Brighton, like my point, Brighton are win one week, lose one week, I win one... I think the th- lower end is really poor, bro. Yeah. I think the lower end is really poor. And the reason why we have a different... Pers- but hey, hold on, hold on. Is it the lower league really poor? Or is it because the top teams are really good? No. I, I, because I remember I Wigan. I remember Wigan when they beat Arsenal that one year to keep mm-hmm. them in the race. Wigan beating United, of course, too. West Brom could pop up and give you a, a sneaky result. Yeah. I don't feel like that's the case. Maybe I'm wrong, right? Because to be fair, Brentford just took points off United. Forest have beat... Oh, United aren't the top team, but... It's tough to that's really the, say. That's what I'm saying, right? And I knew you... I had a feeling you were going to go there, right? Yeah. I don't think it's because the top teams are, are, are really, really good. Because, firstly, other than Arsenal that not conceding, the top teams are conceding goals. Liverpool have the most goals coming back from losing positions in the Premier League. They've won, like, 20-something points in that yeah, position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, these teams, these teams are giving them good games. But these teams... The quality of these teams, the, 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 the level of them, for me, is just really low. Now, I'm not saying it's... Much lower than every other season. I'm not saying that. But this season, it's low. And the reason why the perception, which is what I'm about to say, the perception of these teams that are lower, we kind of think they're better than they are, is because a lot of them have players that could potentially play for the top six. Yeah. Back in the day, first of all, it was top four. So that's two teams that you're not involving Spurs and City. in this yeah, conversation, yeah. right? But now it's, oh, he can play for the top six. So that means he must be mad quality. Or Man United are just trash, bro. <laughs> or Chelsea are just trash, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Or um, Spurs are not that yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that's how I see it. You say, oh, bro, you look at... Um, okay, someone like Paqueta, I think, can play at a really high level, right? Yeah, yeah. 
let's say Bowen. Now, I'm not saying Bowen is trash. Bowen's a good player, right? Yeah, yeah. But you look at Bowen, you're like, oh, he can play for the top six. You can play for you, three of the top six. You look at, <laughs> you see, you know what? Let me not even say West Ham because they're in the top half. Morgan Gibbs White. Yeah. Oh, he can play for the top six. Yeah, but again, you can play for three of the top six. Exactly. <laughs> oh, um, Doughty at Luton. He yeah. can play for the top six. Three of the top yeah, six. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Oh, Nana. Yeah. He can play for the top yeah, six. Yeah. Brantford. He can play for the... Yeah, yeah. So all of a sudden, you're saying all the time, <laughs> he can play for the top six. It mm. sounds way more boosted yeah. than it is the, the top six. Arsenal, they're, they're, they're not quality. But saying the top six makes it sound a lot better than it is. United are trash. Spurs are okay. Mm. Chelsea are trash, bro. So when we say this top six thing, I really think it changes people's You know what perception. it else is as well too, right? Like I look at a lot of teams this season and we've talked about this a few times and I struggle to determine whether they're having good or bad years. Like West Ham is the one for me more than anyone because it's mm. always the Moyes. Is he doing well? Is he not doing well? And every, you're a big Moyes fan. You're a big West Ham guy. Yeah. And you're always telling me when they win, like, oh, they're dissing Moyes or whatever. And then mm -hmm. when they lose, I'm telling you, hmm, Moyes. Mm -hmm. But it's it's weird. Like are West Ham having a good season because they're in a good place. They're seven. But also, I don't think they're having a good year. Like, they've had some bad results this year. They just yeah. choked in Newcastle. They mm -hmm. got destroyed by Arsenal. They've lost to a lot of big teams that in the past maybe they would have given a good game. Yeah. So it, it's weird. Newcastle are another team. Like, are Even they having Ham, a good season? West Ham draw a lot of games. Yeah. So West Ham have won 13 games, drawn nine, and lost 10. Yeah. And you look at it in terms of United, for example, we've only drawn four games. Yeah. But we've lost 12. And no, but that's what I'm saying. Lee Ben so the other day like, was saying, oh, six isn't bad for United. Like they're contesting. I was like, okay, so the way I'm looking at it, right? The position of these teams isn't necessarily bad. Like Brighton is another one. What? They're like ninth? Brighton are 10th. Uh, okay, now. to be fair though, it's the first time they've been 10th. They've been 8th, mm -hmm. ninth, 7th most mm -hmm. of the season. That position for Brighton is a good position for Brighton. But the results haven't been good, bro. The fact that the stat I keep naming... No consecutive wins since September. Yeah. That's not good for any team. You know, Chelsea haven't had consecutive wins since um, last year. And again, they, like Chelsea have been trash all year, in yeah, my opinion. Yeah. And yet, with a few results going their way, mm. they could be in a respectable position. Mm. So that's why I do agree with you. I do think in terms of like actually the quality of the teams this mm -hmm. year in the league, they aren't that good, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. They really I, aren't that good. And, and listen, when I say the quality of things, right? Obviously, I just spoke about individual basis. So I just yeah. spoke about individual basis of how the top six is perceived, right? And I think each season, it should be seen differently. This season, it's a top three. Forget top six nonsense. First of all, Aston Villa are in there right now. So they've already broken that up. And Chelsea are just getting in the top half. But quality, when we're always talking about, is what these guys are doing on the pitch. Forget about the individuals. It's what these guys are doing. United are playing low-level football. West Ham are playing low-level football. Newcastle are playing low-level football. Chelsea are playing low-level football, bro. Brighton are playing okay. For their, for their standards, but they're still leaking goals. Like, exactly. yeah, they're not playing great football. Yeah, they've yeah, conceded yeah. Yeah, uh, quite a lot as well. They're a good coach like, team. They're a well coached team, but they're not a great team. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, that. yeah. So I just think four teams that are meant to be in and around, they're playing low level football, bro. And then when you go even lower and lower, goodness me, whatever and Brentford, Crystal Palace, and these guys are producing is absolute <laughs> horror. So. I, d I don't think it's so that That's strong. why I'm asking, like, we're strong. talking about the advert for the Premier League, like, how competitive it is, how anyone can beat anyone. But, like, I feel like if this shit was happening in a different league, bro, yeah. we'd be clowning the Bundesliga for this. So, I mean, listen, we don't really know, but, yeah, I get where you're coming from. Again, we don't have all the stats and stuff with us, but it's just about how it, the perception of how it looks in the moment. But, yeah, as I said, the league, the top end, really good between them three teams. And the rest, I think it's okay. I don't think it's that good, personally. Quick, Spurs, yeah. we're guessing them up, saying, is it, but, I mean, they're okay. They're okay team. Villa, they're okay. Do you know what I mean? And the rest, I think, are just... If I had to ask you, just to quickly wrap this up, who's winning the Premier League? <sighs> bro, my answer has changed so many times, bro. Literally, it always changes. My opinion might be City. I told you Arsenal... Liverpool. I think I've told you Arsenal, Liverpool, and City the last week. I've given you an, a different answer three times now this week. That's what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> um... I, I, I look at City's fixtures and I struggle to see where they're going to lose. Uh, they got Spurs away, which is going to be tough, which might get put to the last game, which is insane away. City Spurs. They might, they might put that as the last game. So Spurs have to throw that game. Yeah. They Spurs do. have to they play do. Skip. Yeah. What's that dude up front that they have? The Scarlet? Bro. <laughs> they play the kids. To. They might have to, you know. But, uh... Who is winning the league? I was Liverpool till United game. And then they have got four or five away games but they got some big players coming back they do um 
Arsenal are so good, but their fixtures are tough, man. Bro, they're the best. For Arsenal me, Arsenal are the, the best. best team with the hardest schedule. Arsenal, that's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. Arsenal are the best team with the hard. If Arsenal had City's fixture list, they just cruise it. Yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah, safe. Yeah, yeah. Because of fixture list, I'm going to go see. Surely, <laughs> it's surely, so I look tough. at City. I look at City. Yeah, I think I, they're the worst. Of the, say, they I might be the worst of the three. And I'm saying I'm struggled to see where they're going to drop. I look at Arsenal's and I and I'm just saying surely. There's but that's what I'm saying. If and Arsenal remember, win the a league, draw yeah. is detrimental. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Surely Arsenal are going to drop points in the next eight games. But that's what I'm saying. If Arsenal win the league this year, it's one of the greatest runs to end out a season. Second, yeah. since December, it'll be one of the, like, it's like the greatest half season from a team ever. Yeah, it's like, it's like City, what City would do. City won at 18. Bro, that's, like, you know they have to play Chelsea at home where big yeah. game killers. United yeah. away where they struggle. Spurs away who are going to be fighting for their lives for that game. It's and then they have Champions League at the same. It'll take a crazy run, and I'll I'll applaud them if they do it. Bro. Oh no, it, no like, doubt, no doubt. It'll be the craziest run. I think right now. I think City. Ask me next week. It's gonna change, bro. I promise you, it'll change. I have uh, I have no conviction saying that. Who's going down? Who's going down? Yes, yeah, Sheffield, Burnley, and who? Sheffield, Burnley, and I think Luton just have some valiant effort in them. I'm going to say Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest. I'm going to say Nottingham Forest go down. I'm going to say... Yeah, I'm going to say Nottingham Forest. I also think Brentford needs to watch out. I'm going to say... You're not going to like this. Don't say my boys. Everton are going down. <sighs> I think that's going to wrap it up from us. It's been an interesting one. I think we're going to put this out after the Champions League goes out just because the focus is going to be mostly on those games. So I might put it out on Thursday. Mm. But whenever you guys do see this, let us know, is this the greatest or most exciting Premier League season that you guys have ever seen? Because right now the stats say it. The storyline could mm. be pointing in that direction. But as me and Cam have spent this whole episode talking about, there's some big hitters as well too. And although there's been a, a nice journey... Every story needs a blockbuster finish. So, Cam, thank you for joining me this week. Look enjoy up. Greece. Yeah, uh, appreciate try it. Try and man. stay off the timeline. You know, just enjoy the hey, sun and all that. I'll try, man. 100%. I'll try. It's been a pleasure. This episode has been great, guys. I've really enjoyed it. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment down below what I just asked you guys. Go check out BR as well, too, because as always, they are powering this podcast, and we couldn't do it without them. So make sure you're doing all that stuff. With that being said, it's my boy, Culture Cam. It's myself, Lies. We'll see you next week. Peace.